Our first task is to implement a function which calculates the sum of the first n natural numbers. We'll start with the naive approach. Then we are going to implement a more efficient way to solve this problem using a formula that is more than 2000 years old. Alright, so let's switch to our Xcode playground project. I define a function called sum which takes a single argument. This argument represents the number of natural numbers whose sum we want to calculate. The function returns an unsigned integer which gives the sum. We implement a very simple logic. We sum up all the numbers starting with 1 up to the value of the input parameter n. Because of this loop, our function has a linear time complexity. We can confirm this by calling the sum function with steadily increasing n values. The console log shows that the execution time increases linearly with the input. Although this function does the job, there is a better way to compute the sum of the first n natural numbers. We are going to rely on a simple formula. Carl Friedrich Gauss is said to have found this relationship in his early youth. However, he was not the first to discover this formula. It is likely that its origin goes back to the Pythagoreans and it was known as early as the 6th century before Christ. The benefits of using this formula become evident if we check out some examples. To calculate the sum of the first three natural numbers, we can just add them together. We get the same result using the new formula. As the number increases, it becomes obvious that the formula gives a cleaner and shorter solution. So let's implement it using Swift. The sum optimized function operates in constant time. The execution time does not depend on the input. Let's run the same performance test as we did for the sum function. The results prove that the execution times do not vary regardless of the input size. There are only some minor, negligible differences in the range of microseconds. Another huge benefit of the linear algorithm is its performance. Let's compare the two methods. The sum optimized is more efficient even for smaller values and the difference just grows with the input. This chart visualizes the running times of the two functions. The optimized constant time function does not depend on the input, unlike the sum function which runs in linear time. By applying this clever formula, we managed to implement a solution with the most optimal time complexity. In the next lecture, we are going to solve a more challenging problem.